one thing I love about living in the yurt is that um, my walls are polyester. They're, they're thin. It's like living in a tent. You're directly connected with everything outside. It's like when you go camping, it's such a such a, a connected way of living like you're you're so at ease when you hear the birds in the morning and uh you know you hear the wind at night and you get a little bit nervous when a thunder and lightning storm comes in you hear the rain on the roof we're, we're insulated in the homes that we live in now we're insulated from the real world we have no idea what the temperature is outside we have no idea what's going on in the in the real world around us but when you live in a yurt you're directly linked to your your environment But the downside um, is definitely having the thin walls is the insulation properties. It's cold in the wintertime and it requires a lot of a lot of wood and a lot of effort to keep the to keep the place warm. There's ways in which you can build to, to lessen that impact, but I, I, I just I haven't done it. You know, it's uh, I built on a hill to protect from the elements. But if I built on grade, so flat on the ground, it would have been fine. It would have been a lot warmer. Um, you know, and I was, I had a very limited budget when I started this. I, I built everything with 35000 It was the only money I had left after selling everything I owned in Toronto. All my worldly possessions, I only had $35,000 left. And so that, that was enough to build my home. And that was, that was it. So I've been working off of that ever since. So. So this is the, the, the main system that's making all the power for the yurts. There's two solar panels on the roof of 170 watts each, one 400 watt wind turbine. Uh, this unit here is the main uh, converter, so it converts everything from DC power to AC power. Uh, this unit is the main disconnect, so your power from the turbines and from the solar panels is going down and being stored into the batteries. Uh, and then the power comes up through a charge controller, in through the inverter, in through a breaker box, and then out to the yurts. Uh, very basic system. It sounds kind of complex, but uh, this one actually I built in July uh, and basic cost was about $5,000 for everything and you can do it yourself. And it's running fridge, freezer, lights, computer, um, I, you could put wireless internet, uh, sliding miter saw, all kinds of stuff. So there's lots of power. I chose living in a yurt because of the fact um, this land, which I'm on right now, was a spot when I was 10 years old. I was always running around back here playing, having a good time. Uh, this was the land in which gave me a lot when I was a kid. So if my brothers and sisters were picking on me, which older siblings tend to do, what I used to do was run away from home, but I'd end up back in the forest. And the forest was the only spot that I could be that I was never really judged. I was allowed to be whatever I wanted to be. I could be king of the castle. I could do whatever I was at 10 years old. Nobody was saying you're too skinny, you're not dressed right, you're, you're talking weird, something. I, it was neutral ground. So I remember it was, uh, I think it was around January or February, um, sleeping on the couch at the farmhouse, still had my house in Toronto, and trying to figure out what I was gonna do and where I was gonna do it. I knew I wanted to move home, but I didn't want to move into the farmhouse with my parents. You know, I was 31 years old, That's it, it's not gonna happen. Even though it was gonna be for a year, I didn't want to be that 30 year old living with his parents. So, uh, so I, I remember walking back here with the dogs and I walked all through all the hills in the, in the forest and the field and tried to figure out, okay, well, where am I gonna build? How am I gonna build? And then when I was really looking at the forest around me, I thought, is it fair for me to come back here and clear away all the trees and build a home just so I can figure out what I wanna be when I grow up? Because I still had no idea what I wanted to do. And I realized that it's not fair for me to, to uh, put that price on the land when it's given me so much. So I thought about a trailer. 
I thought about a school portable. Uh, I thought about um, uh, building a small little log cabin. Uh, there was all kinds of things. But I have brothers and sisters as well, and, and I think they didn't really like the idea of me building back here and building on the farm. It's like, why is David building on the property, and why can't we? So I, I finally came across yurts in Algonquin Park. They've got them in Mew Lake. And they're a different style of yurt, but I, I saw it, and that's what I was sold on. It's like, yeah, I'm going to live in this. And when I look at that in comparison to this, there's no comparison. And uh, I ended up finding Pacific Yurts, uh, the, the manufacturer of this one, and I, I fell in love with it as soon as I saw it online. And I, I remember going out to visit him, and I ordered one, and, and, uh, and I built it. And the idea behind the yurt I fell in love with is that I could have this nomadic lifestyle. And I thought, see, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. I can pack up my yurt, pack up the deck, I'll make everything portable, my power system and everything, and I'll take it down the road. As soon as my father's health, health improves, I'll pack everything into the trailer, I won't have an impact on the land and I'll leave. Because I didn't want to harm the land that had given me so much as a kid, right? That was the, that was the main goal. And the yurt really was soft on the, the landscape. And I thought, it'll be fun for a year and give it a shot. And uh, yeah, I didn't know that it would turn out to be this. The, the one thing that I've, I've come in contact with and in the, in the, I think the one message that I've learned from doing this is, is in the message that I'd like to kind of portray is that um, this is a lifestyle that's good for me. Uh, living in a yurt has been amazing. It's been a way for me to figure out what I want to be and how I can grow my life and develop. Um, but it's not, it's not for everybody. And I think the one thing that I want to get through to people is that life isn't all about let's cash in everything and go move into a yurt however there's people all over the place that are doing it and i meet people every week that is like you've inspired us we're we're going to to move into a yurt or we've been looking at yurts and i keep telling them that you know it's it's not just about the yurt it's about the choices that you're making and living every day and i know when i lived in the city my brother and i had the big powerboat we had the truck we had you know all the toys there was no thought to anything, food purchases, uh, toys, clothes, anything. There was no thought to how we were spending our money. We were just spending money because we had it. But now, when you spend your money, you can live in a mansion, but how you spend your money to heat the mansion, to, to run the water, to buy your clothes, to you know impact the, the community around you, it has a huge ripple effect. And I think that's the one thing that I want to try and get across to people. Yurts are great. Yurts are a great way to connect to the environment and connect to the land and really listen to what's going on. But I think the biggest thing is understanding you have a power and choice. And it's that choice you choose whether when you're spending money, environmental protection, environmental destruction. That choice you have.